So everyone, I want to introduce you to uh, Jan Michael Carillo. He's at, uh, you're at Oak Ridge too, that yep. uh, Dr. Bobby Sumter's at, uh, mm -hmm. a similar field. So we're very happy to have you here today. Oh, thank you were you. here uh, last year and you did another great talk. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, thank you for uh, accommodating us with these uh, web seminars. So okay, thank I'll, you. I'll mute yourself, I'll, I'll mute myself and uh, let you do the talking. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, so, my name is John Michael Carillo. Um, so, I'm going to present molecular dynamics simulations of polymers, and I'm from the Center of Nanophase Material Sciences at Oak Ridge National Laboratory at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So, next, um, this is a picture of where where I work. So this is the CNMS, the Center for Nanophase Material Science. It's it's right beside the neutron source, the spallation neutron source. So if you can read here, CNMS is a Department of Energy Office of Science user facility. And we provide access and expertise or equipment for a broad range of nanoscience research, including this nanomaterial synthesis, and fabrication. But what I specialize is in the theory, modeling, and simulation. And CNMS also acts as a gateway for the nano science community to benefit from RNL's neutron sources, the SNS shown here. This is the neutron source and uh, HIFR, which is not shown here, and also the com computational resources. Um, so Oak Ridge has a um, summit. It's not shown here, but the uh, summit is uh, the, the fastest, I think, in top 500 uh, supercomputers. And Next slide. Okay, before I proceed with my slides, I want to um, go to um, Bridges. So I'm very glad that Dr. Professor Geet gave us um, a location to Bridges, and I can demonstrate the uh, simple simulations here. Um, let me log in. So I made an alias for exceed. And I usually use LastPass because I don't remember the password. Docker. Okay, one more. Exceed. And I copy the password. Paste it here. And then they have this push option, which I have to approve with my phone. Okay, and I G S I S S H to bridges. Okay, and then I want to go to our allocation for the storage. So I go to luster storage and then So I prepared a directory for this tutorial. And let me go to my Git website and clone. Copy this one. So git clone minus B. Let's see. 20. Okay, it didn't. It didn't copy. Okay, there. So this takes a while, so that's why I'm doing it now. And then I'm gonna continue with our with my talk. So here we go. So introduction. So the development of humankind is influenced on the materials on the material technology used. So uh classical system of naming the prehistory and historic ages are shown here. So we have the three age system, stone age, copper age, iron age, and it depends on what the what your tools are made of. And around uh, 1900s, we invented polymers. And this is the general history of the polymer age. So in 1920, Staudinger proposed the macromolecular hypothesis. That he's saying that you can make long polymer chains by connecting uh, small molecules with covalent bonds. And in 1929, Carpenter's demonstrated that this works. And in 1930s to 60s, the 
foundation of polymer science were, was established and 1960s to 80s, the main principles of modern polymer physics were developed. So um, it's been a hundred years, but uh, next, there's still facets of polymer science where we, where our understanding isn't complete. So for example, polymer in composites or polymer in nanocomposites, polymer at interfaces, charged polymers, associating polymers, semi-crystalline polymers and with crystalline polymer networks. And computer simulations in polymer physics can help us uh, by, I mean, you can make models and you can test assumptions and uh, you can also mimic or attempt to mimic experimental systems. And the problem with uh, running computer simulations is that uh, the, the modes of relaxations of a polymer spans 12 to 15 degrees of magnitude. So what we really, really need is a multi-scale approach in modeling polymers. So you go from the quantum scale to the macro scale or the continuum scale. And what I'm going to show in this tutorial is uh, will be in the mesoscale or um, represent the polymers of bead spring model. So it can be used to study universal polymeric properties and they do not depend, this model do not depend on specific chemical details. Okay, and next. So the tools for this tutorial, so I have uh, lamps, I install lamps. So I, I believe tomorrow or the next day, you're gonna do more lamps from another uh, presenter. Um, and the Palmer Physics book, for my reference, I use a uh, Palmer Physics by Michael Rubenstein. And, and all the code for this uh, tutorial, including the presentation can be downloaded or can be cloned uh, via this uh, this Git uh, website. So let me go back to, okay, so, so it's done, right? So this is supposed to be what we're going to do. Uh, I, I logged on to Bridges and then um, I'm gonna load some modules. GCC. So these are just, uh, so I'm building lamps using GCC and GCC open MPI. In letter C of this uh, slide, uh, I think I, I um, asked Professor Geet to uh, disseminate this, uh, this page. And um, there's also, there's uh, steps on how to build lamps using CMake. And but but I uh, pre-built lamps already, so it's also in the in that Git uh, Git repo, and and the binary is there. And also, if you remember, um, I SSH bridges with minus Y, so I can get the X working in bridges, so for example. If I say to the plot and plot sine X. You can see that the uh, GNU plot should work. Um, can you guys see this? So we have sine function. Okay. Uh, so so here are uh, some basic steps in um, performing molecular dynamic simulations. Any molecular dynamic simulations, basically. So for our case, it's polymers. Um, first, we construct a model. Then second, we run simulations and so the, the lamps simulation would uh, spew out the trajectories and then after which we analyze those trajectories. Okay. So uh, here in this demo, um, I'm gonna show you how to run lamps in, um, in bridges, so. The so, by the way, this is the 2020 version. If you go to the other branch, which I called Mac 2019, um, there's the Mac version, which I presented last year. And the codes are built uh, in Mac OS with, uh, with Homebrew. Okay. Um, so here, so first step we, Construct a model. Uh, basically, we're going to use this coarse grain polymer model, polymer model by uh, Kramer and Gress, where you have Leonard Jones beads connected to an unharmonic Fini bonds. 
And then the equation of motions uh, is through the Langevin dy dynamics using a Langevin thermostat. So you have this random force, you have this viscous term, and this is a conservative term. Okay, and a variation of this model is if you want to change the flexibility of this polymer, you add a, you add a bending potential, which uh, is applied to adjacent bonds. So this one, the higher the K bend value, it makes this region straighter. So you go from a flexible chain to a semi-flexible or rod-like uh, polymer. Okay. So first we construct our model. So in this model, um, I'm going to build 40 polymer chains with degree of polymerization 10 and in very low uh, number density. So they're very sparse. And you can see this. Uh, uh, this polymer. So um, I think I have it here for a uh, VMD. So this is how it looks like. VMD. So I use VMD to view this model. So I'm going to put the periodic boundaries, okay? So, so you, you can see there's a, these are the polymers. Let's change the representation to CPK so we can zoom in and see the bond, see the bonds. So you have 10 beads connected to, to a bond. So how did I build this, uh, this simulation box? So in, in the Git repository, I have this code, make box poly point C, which is a C code. And what it does is um, I copy the, some, some functions from this book, uh, Allen and Tildesley, where this function, um, this first function gives you a value of zero to one. This next function chooses a uh, position inside the simulation box. So you get X, Y, Z position. And then after choosing a random uh, point in the simulation box, I have this rand vector uh, function which gives me a random unit vector. So essentially, if I choose one and then I just get another vector and then connect, 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 and then go to the next uh, next chain. Okay, that's that's how I build the uh, make box. Uh, how how I build the simulation box. So this is uh, the output of that code, which is a data file in LAMPS. You can call it as a data file. So here's the link for some information on how to build a data file. Basically, it tells you how many atoms are there, how, the bonds, how many angles, and the bond types. And this is the um, your bonds in your simulation box, the masses, and then there are atom coordinates, so the x, y, and z, and atom types, and list of bonds and angles. Okay, so we're going to run now the a demo simulation for um, this system. So if you go to data set, and then it's number two, and then, then demo. See the polymer dot is here. Um, you can use bridges to grab a node. So so Bridges has this interact. Uh, it's different from what we have in uh, Oak Ridge. We use uh, S A S alloc. But anyway, I, I read their um, read their website, and this seems to work. So here, uh, this is the account number that we were using that uh, that Professor Git gave us. Minus N one tells me that I'm asking one node. And since the regular um, regular queue in Bridges, uh, there are two CPUs with 14 cores each, so that's why I'm asking 28. And minus T is um, I'm asking it for 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna run that. Um, okay, so it's basically we we're asking for for a node and we have to wait, but we can't wait. So I'm going to go to another window.
Okay. So I have this uh, script also. Uh, it's a submission script. It's it's the same thing that I'm going to run here. Okay. I'm going to go back here. So sorry about that. So we have we have the node now, and so I'm going to run lamp. So I'm here. I'm going to load modules. This is how I built lamps. And I'm going to use MPI using four cores. This in minus that run is, is the input file for lamps. And this random, if you, if you type this random, it's just a random number generator in bash. And it would be the random seed Langevin thermostat for choosing uh, random forces. And the data file for which the simulation will read the initial configuration of, of your polymer is here. It's polymer point that. So if we run this, um, it should be short because I intentionally made it short. So okay, ten seconds. So what's inside in that run, the, the, the lamps um, input file? So it's the definition of your potential energy. So your pair style potential would be the Leonard Jones with a cutoff of 2.5. And as I mentioned before, the bond is the bond style Fini, the unharmonic bond. And you have an angle style cosine, the one that uh, you apply to adjacent bonds. And you read the data file, which we made using the, the previous make box poly exe code. And you initialize the temperature for for the system and then you have this random number right to uh see this uh this uh temperature initial temperature distribution and then you have the coefficients for your potential energy so the angle the bond and uh, special bonds and after that is set up um, we tell LAMS to run a equilibration step. So usually when I set up the simulation box, uh, since we choose randomly the points, there's a possibility that those points would overlap. So to do that, you use this, uh, this command and the limit, which, which um, if, if two beads overlap, the energy would be very high. And um, the next step for the MD integration would result in large uh, displacements of those beads, but we limit the displacement to 0.1 so that our simulation will not blow up. So this is the equilibration step. We run for some, some time that I specified. And then the production step would, uh, would just dump the, the coordinates as a function of time. So you have this uh, dump file in the chord directory. And what's inside this file is just uh, it tells you the time and then the position of all atoms. So there's three types, three sets. So the X, Y, Z, X, U, Y, U, Z, U. This X, Y, Z is the wrap coordinates. And this one is the unwrap coordinates, right? So uh, wrap coordinates in the periodic boundaries is like Pac-Man, right? Going from, one, from the left side, coming out on the right side. So this is what this first three coordinates are. And so, so I also have uh, the run poly script. Oh, oh, it's open already in the other window. Sorry about that. Okay, so run poly script. So this is the account I use. This is the name of the script file. I, I'm asking for one node. I'm defining that there are 28 cores per node and I'm running, I'm gonna run it for 30 minutes. I'm loading modules. And I'm looping through all the the degree of permutation. So if you look outside, this is just the the directories, right? All this blue font uh, text, font text. So as I loop through those directories, I'm running each simulation serially. So this is the same um, call, same call for the for lamps, and we can submit it uh, as batch. And we can check my username is JW. Oh no, not B job. B job is for another cluster. 
So SQ. So it's running, right? And the output is here. If you cat slurm, so the simulation is running for all those uh, directories. And let me end that interactive mode um, to. So to, to determine if you're in the interactive mode or just in the lagging mode. So if you have this 004, that means you're in the interactive mode. In the lagging mode, usually we indicate login 0118 or what what have you, whatever number they have assigned to you. Okay, so I'm just gonna exit the interaction mode, interactive mode. Okay, so I'm back in the lagging mode. All right, let me see if... Uh, it's still running. So, so the interactive mode is, um, I don't know what CG means, but I think it tells me that it's ending, that it's gone. Um, so I'm going to run the other cases. So by the way, um, here, 0 to different n ideal is just my code telling me that I'm running a polymer chain in ideal solvent condition here in self-avoiding walk and here the before is for sol for solvent. And number five is I'm changing the bending potential. So let me just run this batch. Okay, so number three, number four, number five, they are all pending. Okay, so um, going back to our presentation, we are done with running the simulations and the, the third step would be uh, to analyze the trajectory. So we were, as we remember, um, we are running single chain polymers that are in the dilute limit. So um, we hope that one polymer chain would not interact with another polymer chain. And we want to see how this, uh, we want to analyze the structure of this polymer chain. So there's two types of uh, analysis here. So there's the static analysis where we look at the structure of a single polymer chain. We're going to look at the mean squared end-to-end -end distance of a segment in a chain. Uh, it's mean squared radius of gyration. It's form factor, which is uh, what you get if you do um, reciprocal space analysis or like uh, similar to small angle neutron or small angle x-ray scattering and one bond correlation function to check how flexible your polymer chain is and for the dynamic analysis we just look at the mean square displacement of uh of the bead in in, in this final code i use mpi because um it's it's a uh, rather um computationally heavy code okay so Single chain polymer structure. So polymers, they are fractal in nature. And if you look at one polymer chain as a whole, and you look at each segment, the property of the whole would look like the property of the segment, right? You have this fractal dimensionality, D. And so if you look at segment versus the end-to-end -end distance of, uh, so S is segment size. For example, you look at three, this, this three, and if you look at the distance from this point to this point um, and plot it, so you, you'll get a different dimensionality. So D five third, if, you're, um, if your chain is following a self-avoiding walk statistics, and D is equal to two, if it's a ideal chain or Gaussian statistics, and if your chain is in poor solvent, uh, it is in collapse and D is equal to three, okay? And how do we tweak the solvent quality of your uh, simulation? So um, if we recall, we have this uh, Leonard Jones potential for the beads and epsilon is the depth of the potential and sigma is the size of the bead. So if we do a cutoff here, we only um, consider the repulsive part of the interaction, the pairwise interaction, and that would correspond to a good solvent. Remember, the simulations are all in implicit solvent, right? So we just tweak the interaction between, um, between uh, polymer beads. So if your well depth is very high and you consider to a cutoff of 2.5 to include the attractive 
part of the Leonard Jones potential, um, this would collapse and you're in the poor, poor solvent regime. And if you have, if you strike the balance between attraction and thermal fluctuation, and um, then you're in the ideal solvent regime or your chain would follow a, a random walk or Gaussian statistics. And empirically, this has been known to be epsilon equal to one third. And to, uh, to measure the size of your uh, polymer chain in different solvent, we use the radius of gyration by this equation. And intuitively, we know that uh, the polymer chain that is in good solvent, um, follow self burning walk would have a higher size and this would be the lowest and this would be somewhere in between. Okay, so uh, how do we connect this in experiments? So um, if you do um, SANS or small angle neutron scattering, right? Um, you're gonna get the density density correlation function of your scatterers. So if you put a polymer chain in a deuterated, uh, deuterated solvent, so you have contrast between the solvent and your chain, you will be able to measure this form factor in the dilute limit. So, um, so this is density, this is the correlation function. And for an isotropic system, we have the sink function. And for a Gaussian chain, this has been uh, derived by Dubai, where you have the radius of gyration here. And since the dimensionality of, uh, of an ideal chain is two, so um, it's been shown that um, the porod slope for the scattering of this ideal chain will give you a negative two slope. For a rod, it would be negative one. And for a sphere, um, it would be a round three. So I think I have that here. Let's see if, if the simulations are done. So the simulations were done, but we don't really need them. Um, so I have a directory analysis codes, and I mentioned that uh, I have uh, the segment size versus segment uh, plots. This is the results of that uh, the code I wrote, and we can use the plot to show the result. But no, that's a, my X doesn't work, so I have to go to the so this happens. So I I notice that uh, sometimes my X gets revoked. Okay, it's revoked here also. Even if I have to. Okay, so I think I need to get a new one. X C my password so I approve and SS GSI SSH means Okay, I hope it works. Okay, so this is the plot where I use the new plot to fit the power loss here for the good solvent, the ideal solvent, and the um, poor solvent. And then if we go to the form factor POQ. You also have the, so this would be in log scale. So you have the the rod and then the Debye function. And this is the simulation at ideal solvent. And this is for the sphere. So if you look at this, so I wrote the those equation here. 
um, you guys can look at it uh, at your your free time. So it would be in the third column for the sphere. So third columns using one. So for the sphere, you have this um, fringes. So yeah. So this is how a sphere a sphere scattering would look like. Okay. So I'm um, going back to our uh, presentation. Okay. Okay. Basically, I this is what I showed you over bridges. Okay. So that was polymers in solvent, and now. Um, we consider polymers in melts. So polymer melts are polymers without a solvent and above its glass transition temperature and behaves like a solid at short time scales and liquid at long time scale. So it's a viscoelastic material. In example, this is a silipati, where, where um, if you hit it, it feels like solid, but if you leave it alone, it would uh, melt. <laughs> Right, and so hydrodynamic interactions here are screened, and the conformation of the chain is nearly ideal. Right, so you can map this uh, random walk in a freely jointed chain, right, with an effective cool length or the step of your random walk. And so the maximum length of this random walk, R max, would be the number of steps times the length of your cool steps, and the ensemble average squared. So if you look at end-to-end -end distance of this random walk, would be nk bk squared. And so this Kuhn length is the ratio of uh, this to this. And for different types of polymers, um, you have different Kuhn lengths. So you can basically map, sort of map uh, polymers uh, using a random walk, right? map a polymer melt using random walk. But there are instances where polymers are non-spherical. So that's why we have this uh, bending potential, right? So here in letter A, your chain have symmetric monomers and in B, your Kuhn step is much longer than your diameter, right? So this is a strongly asymmetric uh, monomer. And to do that, we apply a bending potential for adjacent bonds to follow this, uh, to mimic this behavior. Okay, so instead of a freely jointed chain model, we have the worm-like chain model where at, uh, if your size of your polymer is much greater than your persistence length, the whole thing would look like a random walk, right? So you can get the persistence length as a characteristic uh, length of the decay of your bond-bond correlation function, okay? And if you do the form factor, the form factor of this uh, semi-flexible chain, you can see that uh, at high Q, which is uh, low or short length scales at real space, you have a dimensionality of one, which are four rods. And at low Q, um, which is tells you the size of the polymer, which is a random walk. So you have this d equal to two, which is the multiply function here. Okay. So if you look at your polymer at very long, very large length scales, it would look like a random coil. And as you go nearer to that polymer, it would look like a rod. That's that's the worm-like chain model. Okay. Um, Next, uh, so we're done with the structure of the polymer. So we proceed with uh, chain dynamics. Um, so we did the simulation using a Langevin thermostat and we have this viscous term. And this C here is related to the Einstein relation where it's inversely proportional to, um, to the diffusion coefficient. For example, if you have one bead, the mean square displacement of this bead would be equal to six, uh, DT. So essentially, you can get the, the diffusion coefficient of this bead at long time. So there's an analytic, uh, analytical um, solution for the mean square displacement 
for that one. So at uh, short time scales, you get this ballistic um, regime, and then at long time scale, you have this dispersive regime. And at long time, you can get the D. So that's for a single bead. Um, what's different for polymers is their connectivity, right? So the total friction for this uh, um, molecule, macromolecule, would be and how many beads I have. So it's going to be 40 C. So if you look at this plot at long time, um, it's uh, basically your diffusion coefficient would be 40 times lower, right? And then here you have a slope of negative one half. That's because your movement of your bead is um, caged. Okay, so there's cage movement. And, and at long time scale, this would diffuse. That's why you get back the slope of one. Okay, so polymer chain dynamics. I have a code to calculate that. So, I, um, you guys can look at it at your free time. So I use MPI here. Um, so basically, if you look at the how the simulation results are presented. So for example, if you went here, I go chain and N40, then go to each seed ls okay. so each file is a frame in time right so what i did was um, each rank in my mpi i'm assigning uh, different files for that rank to handle and then after they did all their calculation right so it's like in um embarrassingly parallel because i'm just dividing these files to or assigning them to a specific uh, rank and then i reduce everything and get get the reduced array and that will be the msd array so let me go back to that one so to make no i don't know if i have the i don't think i have the modules loaded module GCC. So I make that one and let's grab a note. I forgot how to grab a note. Let's look at the demo. So I'm just going to grab a node back here. Takes a while. But any, anyway, uh, do you guys have any questions? How did you choose the, um, the time step for your dump, dump files there? Like, did you do a, um, a single run. I'm assuming there's like a ton of iterations of this. So do you just break it up like every 20th or something? How do okay. You... Um, so if you, um, for the MSD, so I need dumps that are um, representative of the long, long uh, time scales and the short time scale. So that's why I have two sets of run for the bead. So I have the short and uh, the long one. Then I just put them together. So it's right. Uh, if if you get the, your statistics um, equilibrated, they should uh, put one on top of the other. All right. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. So you basically look at both time scales and you run yes. run a both. Okay. I see. Okay. So uh, let's see. Okay. I got I got my. No. So I'm going to MPI run minus NP. So I ask for one node, so it's 28 MSD. Oops. And let's see 40. I'm doing the 40. So just uh, 
tells me which directory I'm looking at and the dump step that I'm um, looking at in the coordinates, right? And um, you don't have to look at all the coordinates, but you can use them for statistics, right? So you can have, um, for example, this is your time, right? You can go this chunk, this is one delta T, one delta T, and then average everything. So, and you can see here, um, so to get the MSD, this is one time step, and, uh, delta, this time step plus delta T. And you can move this one, and then you have sort of pairs. So I have here 28 threads, and each each thread will handle 3,067 MPI uh, pairs, 3,067 pairs. So th that's how I did it. And the output would be just the time versus the MSD. And I'm going to plot it. I don't think I have access anymore to. Yeah, still has, but set log root block. Set log root block. And I know that the, this one is follows the Rouse dynamic, so its slope is around one half. Okay, let's add a coefficient. So it's too much. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. I showed the plot earlier. Okay, uh, so this is for a unentangled chain and there are more complicated instances for example if you have a long chain the chain gets entangled with other chain and there's a theory for that um so former chain dynamics for long chains in melt would be uh you have chain entanglements and what happens is your mean square displacement as a function of time you have um different regimes at uh, low time uh, below some point uh your basically diffusing like a Rouse chain. That's why you have one half. And then at a longer time scale and longer length scale, you begin to see this uh, entanglement. And you're, even though you're caged at a one half power, you're more caged with a one fourth power. And they call this reputation theory because this tube would behave like a snake, would rotate like a snake. So you have this one half, one fourth, and this tube here would move like a Rouse chain, so you get one half again. And at a very long time scale, this whole thing would fuse, so you get back one. So you can run long simulations for this one. And I think Kremer and Gress did the first simulation in the 90s in this, uh, for this uh, problem. Okay, uh, four o'clock. Actually, I'm done. Um, do you guys have any? Questions? You can... When you say things are like embarrassing parallel, embarrassingly parallel, what do you what do you mean by that? Um so each thread doesn't have to communicate with each rank doesn't that have to communicate with another rank. So they have their own sets of calculation independently. Right. And at the end I just have to reduce them. Does that make sense? Oh, oh yeah, so they don't share, you're not sharing anything between them. No. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, yeah, sorry. So I'm calculating each uh, set of files by assigned to, the, to that rank. And then when, once everything is done, I have an MPI barrier and then reduce them. Um, any more questions? Um, how do you how do you guys find this? Uh, it's very new to me. This this mode of uh, doing demo.
So I'm looking at the chat. Uh, what's a 100% scaling? I think that was in response to the parallel question I asked just now. Molecular dynamics automatically accounts for things like vibrational entropy of states. Yeah. So basically, MD, you just uh, solve Newton's equations, right? So you, you have, um, if, if we go back to how I did the equation of motion, basically, you just have the total forces, so you just sum this force, this is the conservative, this is a random force. Um, it's it's not explicit, right, for the entropy of states. So you have this, um, you have this trajectory, which you assume to be uh, both, uh, I don't remember the term. Anyway, uh, that's, that's how I did, did it in the MD. Um, any more questions? Or do you want guy uh, do, do you guys want to try the directories, try running in bridges? It's actually very nice. Um, so we can look at number five and we can look at um, the script. So this would be a bash script, right? If, if I just copy this one, this portion, Comment the uh, command. I need something. So it's just basic bash. So I have a list here. And from this array list, I go through all the elements. Right. Um, so what happens if you run this? So you go to each directory and list the location of the directory. The Sparks from Sandia works similar. I, I'm not familiar with Sparks. Um, so bridges have uh, Slurm and in OLCF, uh, there's two clusters that I know that uses Slurm that's they call Skades and Rhea. And each each cluster is different. You have to read the documentation. Anyway, this this one, this bash script I'm showing, um, I think this is general. And you can add. Um, so this is how I do it in in Summit. For example, if I want to bundle a run, I put an ampersand put them in the process and pause. So is it pause? No, not pause, it's wait. So, so everything would happen. Um, everything would run at the same time. Um, what else? Um, Do you guys want to do C or the new plot? New plot. <laughs> so in new plot. Um, so I think I I did some fitting. So 
is in the analysis directory. Okay, here, where we fit the um, the bond bond correlation function with uh, exponential decay. So let me clean this first. Clean. Then. Okay. And I think one should work. It's slow. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let me just go to that location. And so this is how I fit I fit using the new plot. So this is the equation I'm trying to fit, the exponential decay, and I initialize the value. No, actually the bond length for um thermogrest uh, Fini bond is around 0.97. So I, I did not fit that. And I set K band equal to eight. So I know the persistence length is around eight. Right, so this is the output of that code, BIBK point text. And you're gonna fit BIBK point text with F of X by tweaking LP. So the new plot, of course, uh, I don't have X anymore, but we have uh, the dumb terminal. So, set term dumb. We see that uh, fit. Okay, so the new plot. New plot is very um, convenient for me when, once I'm in my, when it, once you're in a cluster and um, you do some diagnostics. Okay. Um, up to what time is my tutorial? Is it up to 4.30 or 4.45? Okay, um, any more questions, any requests? So those... You have till 4.45, sorry, I had my mic unplugged. Okay, yeah, I, I saw it in the chat. Okay. So those, those dot .p files, um, mm -hmm. those are those are the like new plot, that's, yeah. how, that's what yeah. new plot recognizes. Okay, yeah. so how, how did you... It, it recognizes any, um, any file type, it, it doesn't care, but I just, for myself, I name it dot .p. So all um, the plot is not P. Oh, okay. And then, so my computer does the same thing where it has issues with X11 all the time, like you uh -huh. are. So how did you just do that? How did you just plot that right on the window? Um, this one, the the DOM terminal? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I changed the, uh, I changed the script and I set term DOM. <laughs> so I set the terminal to DOM. Oh, okay. And it, it just plots it right on the terminal application. Yes. Then. Okay. Yes. Text. That's a text. There. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So this doesn't happen in OLCF clusters. But I don't know why in bridges, sometimes you, you lose your permissions in X. So that's why I have so many um, terminals open. So I was trying to avoid it, but still happen yes ssh minus y is working but uh as you if you ask for an interactive mode and you go back to um to the login node um ssh minus y seems to be not working after that so you have this unable to display so i don't know why, why that happens So you guys can look at the, the analysis codes I wrote. Um, they're all in C. Um, you can do this also in Python, but um, when I was doing my PhD, Python wasn't, um, was still in its infancy and it's not as famous as Perl. So Perl was famous then. I think Python now is more famous. 
And so the question, there's a question. So this talk is about characterizing the effective dimensionality of polymers in solvents. Yes, yes. So uh, this is basically one of the many things you can do with lamps. And this is just a textbook example. This is just what I chose. And uh, you get to run MD, analyze it. Right? You, you set up the simulation first, run MD, and analyze it. And these are some example codes to do that. Just a flavor of what, uh, what you can do. Does that make sense? Different kinds of potential. So I think uh, there are many more potentials uh, i don't use them much because they're too complicated so for the for the polymers this um this type of simulations even though you have a very simple potential sometimes you have different connections right for example you have linear chains and you have bottle brushes uh different architectures and different um combinations of your potent of your just leonard jones potential and everything gets so big immediately that um if you use those other potential it would slow down considerably your um, simulation. Does that make sense? Um, you can run atomistic simulation in lamps. There's um, amber and which is basically like uh, Leonard Jones potential with long range interaction, long range Columbic interaction. And with, with the long range interactions, you have, uh, I think they have solvers in lamps, E3M or Ewald sums, and that would considerably slow down your, your simulation. That will not work for this tutorial. So you can specify like the nearest neighbor interactions within lamps, right? Is that what you were kind of just alluding to? Um, nearest, there are some potential that uh, considered nearest neighbors. Uh, so this one is just pairwise. So uh, the one I've been using are all pairwise. So even if it's not the nearest neighbor, right? So if you have long range interaction, um, even from the other end of the simulation box, you can still have some interactions with that. Oh, I see. So it kind of takes into the count the potential in like every direction. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So for the simulations I'm sh I have shown, I have a cutoff of two point five sigma. So about two point five. Everything would be zero. So if you see the pair style coefficient, so this is a cutoff 2.5. This okay. is for the random walk. And if you go to the self avoiding walk, I cut it off at uh, 2 to the 1 6. 2 to the 1 6. So I'm only considering the repulsive, repulsive part. Okay, I see. Okay. Um, what else? Um, um, I can build lamps. I can show you guys how I built lamps. Or did you guys try it already? Okay, so um, let's just go to how I built lamps. So I use their Git. Uh, CD. So I use CMake. And I have a
So basically, I'm I'm just using their presets, and then I name the machine. No, I set the name of the executable to bridges. So that's why the result is lamp bridges. Okay, so that's what it does. So I build this in MPI, uh, the molecule package for the the bond potential and the angle potential. Just run that. Okay, there's something wrong. I don't know what's wrong. Maybe it's just let's build another one Okay, so I don't know what happened. So I'm just building it. So um, after you clone the lamps, get uh, repository. I think I using I'm using the their stable branch. So. Can you use lamps to get to say term? Yes, yes, you can do that. I think there are many green kubu methods. Um, there's a website for lamps um, for thermal pro properties. You can just Google it. So it's basically autocorrelation functions, right? And you can use MPI to uh, calculate autocorrelations. Okay, let's see. Lamps. So there, there's a how to, I think, in lamps. Documentation is the manual. I think, for example, lamps cal calculate viscosity. Um, there are many how to so diffusion coefficient, uh, thermal conduct conductivity. This is what you're looking for, right? And um, they're basically have steps on how to do it. Okay, so the CMake is not yet done. Okay, so make minus J. So um, Bridges has GPUs and I haven't tested it. Um, usually if you run GPUs, depending on the potential energy in your simulations for Leonard Jones potential, it's twice faster. But I think the more complicated your potential, it might go up to 10 times faster. And in the la LAMPS website, for example, LAMPS, uh, Leonard Jones. They have this uh, 
GPU here, which just tells lamps to look for the GPU or the focus or the OMP. And what I usually do is um, I benchmark which accelerator I use. I do a short run, see how fast one would run against the other. And it would be different per cluster. And then before I do the production run, um, I, I get this, this data. So LAMPS is getting built. So it's bridge, uh, building bridges now. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna see what version it built. So it's the March 3, 2020 version of LAMPS. Okay, uh, any, more, any more questions, guys? Uh, any suggestions on what we want to do now uh, and um, okay so um, in the if if some of you are interested in the Mac version so if you go to my website there's the branch the mac the 2019 branch and then i have the same presentation let me download it so So it's the same. Um, almost the same slides, but here I have uh, homebrew to install lamps. So uh, instead of loading modules, I, I installed OpenMPI and, and CMake using homebrew. I'm not familiar with phonons, so I don't I don't know how to answer the electron phonon physics. Sorry. Um, any more questions? I, I think we have fifteen minutes more. Do you guys want to? Try something else. So does MD model the liquid trans solid transition well? Um, you can do grand canonical Monte Carlo, but um, there's a for the Leonard Jones where you. Uh, Rho versus uh, 
I don't remember. But anyway, I think you can do Grand Canonical Monte Carlo different temperatures. And, uh, so just for the energy, does that answer your question? So there's many ensemble where you can see transition from liquid to solid, right? So if you have a amorphous solid to to map, you know, to track how it changes, you can calculate the radial distribution function at different pressure or different temperature. So you can either do a NPT or a Grand Canonical Monte Carlo simulation in lamps, and then do in anal analysis using a radial distribution function to see how the uh, the molecules stack each other. I mean, if if the G sub R gives you uh, very uh, you, you see the liquid peaks in G sub R, then that that would be liquid. And then solid would be higher peaks. Right? Does that answer your question? So you can do it, but does it get the right transition temperature? Um, for the Leonard Jones, I think it does. So, but I don't know for the other types of system. So for water ice, it depends on the potential you use. So um, I think there was one controversy about this water ice, the different states in water ice. And they have uh, complicated, <laughs> complicated potentials to put in lamps. Do you have any recommendations for examples of GCMC with lamps? Uh, in their website, they have, um, what did I do before? Um, you can test Leonard Jones in a, uh, in a cylinder, use GCMC. That one is that doesn't have any bonds or angles, and I think if you read through Lamb's website, they also have uh, molecule templates where GCMC uses this template to put inside or remove the molecule inside the box. see. Okay, uh, it's 4.30. What else? Oh, we still have 15 minutes then. Maybe we can end here if there's no more questions. Um, so if you think of questions uh, that comes up later, you, you guys can email me here. You can ask me anything about Lamps, uh, I'll answer with uh, anything. And this, this, this is a very practical tutorial for me. I, I spent time um, trying to get familiar with bridges so I can show you guys. What, All right, how, great. How I say, Dr. Carrillo, can you hear me? Sorry, I was, I was, I think my mic was was cutting out earlier, but um... okay, uh, I can hear you properly. Okay, yeah, no, no, it's just. I needed to re-plug my mic. Uh, great, yeah, thank you so much for the awesome talk. Uh huh. You're welcome. And, uh, yeah, we can we can end a little early if uh, if no one else has any other questions and uh, finished up. Yeah, it's it's weird, right? Uh, I mean, the same talk, but it went longer the first time in 2019. And yeah. Virtually now it's short with more demonstrations. So okay. Yeah, but, I mean it, 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 it. That seems to be the case for everyone. Okay. Um, 
So it's it's just, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly where the time goes, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, enjoy the rest of the um, tutorials, the rest of the her training. And right. yep. <laughs>